interesting. All right, let's look at the next one. All right, so what if we have these wheels and we have a cord wrapped around them? So this cord is wrapped around a wheel, which is initially at rest when theta is equal to zero. If a force applied to the cord gives it an acceleration of 4t. So, so this cord is moving down with an acceleration of 4t. That is not constant, correct? That's not a constant acceleration. But the cord is going around with an acceleration of 4t. Determine the angular velocity and the angular position of the line. Determine the angular velocity and the angular position. Well, uh, this isn't angular. This is not angular right here. That is the linear acceleration of the rope, right? But do you see that if you've got a rope that's wrapped around a wheel or a pulley disc, you know, if you've got a cord that's wrapped around here, then whatever linear whatever linear information about the cord would, would also be the, the linear information on the edge of the wheel. So I would say that this edge of the wheel has an A tangential of 4T, right? The edge of the wheel has an A tangential of 4T. If I know the tangential acceleration on the edge of the wheel, and I want to know the angular, this is kind of, I like to think about it as kind of jumping from linear to angular. Um, how can I kind of jump from linear to angular? Uh, a equals R alpha. If I know the A and I know the distance, my point that I know the A, you know, I know the A for this point right here on the edge of the wheel is 4T, and I know that point is 0.2 away, then I can find alpha as a function of time. So alpha is 20T. So why didn't it just tell me that? So sometimes, you know, it, it just goes around the bush. Sometimes you, you might know the, it might be easier to measure the linear velocity of that rope than to try to calculate the angu angle, angular acceleration or something. So anyway, <laughs> them telling us that the rope is going at 4t is really them telling us that the alpha is 20t. So if alpha is 20t and we want to find angular velocity as a function of time and angular position as a derivative or an integral, if, if we're given acceleration, angular acceleration, we want to find angular velocity and position, those would be integrals. Those would be integrals. I apologize, I didn't uh, go ahead and print out the formula sheet. I did unhide that from you. It, I think it's on Canvas. I think you can print it out on your own if you want. All right, so here, uh, omega, and, and let's, let's call it omega minus omega initial. Uh, don't forget this omega initial, but at, at this case it was uh, zero. And what's the integral of 20t? So the integral of 20t would be t squared over 2. So you've got that 20 t squared over 2. So here my omega would be 10 t squared. So there's an equation for angular velocity. And if we want position, we can integrate again. Integral. So what's the integral of 10 t squared? And this technically is omega final minus omega, sorry, theta final minus theta initial. Either kind of assume that it starts at some zero um, position, uh, angular position, or you could call this the change in theta. Uh, would be t cubed over 3, 3.33 t cubed. But you, you should probably leave it as t cubed. 10 over 
Okay. And I think that's logical. I mean, I think that's logical to, to if they give you any, if they give you the velocity of that rope, then you can use that to find the angular velocity of the wheel, right? If they tell you the distance that that rope goes, and we kind of did this with those winches a long time ago. Um, if they tell you the distance that the rope moves, listen to that. If they, if they tell you the distance that the rope moves, you could convert that to a theta, right? Just because the arc length, right? If, if it t told you this moved, you know, four meters, then you could find what a four meter arc, what theta would cause a four meter arc length, right? We used A equals R alpha, uh, but if they had given us the velocity, we could have used V equals R omega. If they'd given us a velocity, we could have found omega. If they had given us the um, distance or the S, if they had given us a distance, we could find the theta. Okay, so the next one. 